Great to see you all here. We are celebrating the new members, and if you are going to become a new member tonight, or if you became a member in the past year, can you please stand for one moment? Can we give these guys a round of applause all over the room? Awesome. All right, take a seat. We're so glad that you have decided to make this church your home church. And tonight, we are celebrating your decision and the action that you took to become a member of Oak Creek Assembly of God. So this is about you. We're celebrating, and we're so thankful that you committed to the process. You guys, when started here, you probably were searching for a church, many of you, in the year of 2020, a very interesting year, but God stirred in your heart to come here, and then you came to the Discover class where you learned about our church and our rich history, about our leadership, our senior pastor, the mission of the church. We answered the why of why we do what we do. You took a tour of the church, and then you went on to the Foundations class where you spent 10 weeks learning about theological truths from God's word. And after that, you went on to the membership class where you learned firsthand from our pastor what it means to become a, a member of this local church. And then you went on to the interview with the church board. And guess what? You passed. So congratulations. We're so proud of you guys. And now we're here celebrating your commitment. Yes, let's give them a round of applause. And I simply want to encourage you, now that you are a member, we're going to answer the question, now what? And I want to tell you that the now what has no other steps after it. There's nothing that we want you to do, but it's more connected to the person that we want you to become. Because you are on a journey, just like we are, to discover and become who God created you to be. And we're here to help, and it's so awesome that we're here together as the local church to help each other discover and become who God created us to be. And so I, for the next few moments, I just want to give you a few guiding principles so that you may have great success on your faith journey as you follow Christ and as you just be a member of this church. And these principles, they're, you know, they may sound quite basic, but they will benefit your life. You can apply them to your life. And I, the first point is the, the principle of growth. Now, you and I, we are all created in the image of God, and we follow a God who has no limits, and really, there are no limits to your growth. You can put your own limits on yourself, but God doesn't want you to limit yourself. And I think about growth and how people come alive when they're growing. Life is not about meeting goals and hitting milestones like becoming a member. Life is really about growing and progress. And there's this universal law that says when you stop growing, you actually start dying. And we don't want you to die. You just became a member. Don't die, please. Keep growing. Keep going. Keep advancing. And what better way to grow than in the spiritual disciplines? And I want to talk for one moment about the growth in the Word of God. Out of all the things that you can grow in, please grow in the Word of God. And more specifically, studying the Word of God. I think about the verse found in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, so that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success." Joshua said that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall speak it. You shall live it out. And he was referring to the first five books of the Bible. But in our context, we have much more. We don't have just the, the law, but we also have the prophetic books, the poetic books, the historical books, the gospels, the letters, and the apocalyptic book. So all of these books are for our benefit, and they shall not depart from our mouth, but we shall meditate in it. And that means we should think about it and we should reflect what God is trying to tell us. 
We should ponder on how we can apply God's word to our lives. We should think about how, uh, what, what, what was God saying in the context to, to that audience and how does it apply to our lives today in 2021. I really believe that we should be studying God's word and uh, not only reading through God's word in a year, but if you're like me, when I read through the God's word, there's a lot of things that I do not understand or that I could spend a lot of time on. So I really believe in studying the word of God. And I want to make this really practical for you. I would really encourage you to, to get a Bible. Get a Bible in a good translation that, that you like. There's so many great translations out there. I personally use the translation uh, that I was told that will be read in heaven. It's the Reina Valera 1960. If that translation works for you, I highly recommend it. But there are other great translations out there. Get a study Bible. Study Bibles have commentary and cross-references, and they have maps. I just love the maps, and I love writing notes in my study Bible, and it helps me really understand Scripture. I pray that you would grow in the study of God's Word. Find a time and a place to study. I like studying here in my office on Saturday mornings. That's when it works for me. When there's less distractions, I can study God's Word. I also want to encourage you to grow in prayer. Grow in prayer. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing. I love that verse. It is easy to memorize. Pray without ceasing. Now, the Apostle Paul is not saying that we should pray in audible voice and repeat, repeat formal prayers constantly, but we should have an open line of communication constantly with God. We should, we should open ourselves to listen to God. I heard Pastor reference this verse one time, and he mentioned that it's like having spiritual antennas up at all times, ready to hear God speak throughout the day. Pray without ceasing. I am a, stu- I am a student of mental health. I find it fascinating, uh, the people who study mental health, and uh, there's a lot of advocates out there, and they all say the same thing. There's no health without mental health. I personally believe in spiritual health, but mental health has a lot of benefits. And there was a study done by the University of Michigan when their students were struggling mentally. They did this study and came up up with a long list of how to help their students mentally. And out of the long list, in number five in their list, prayer was on it. And they said, prayer can help you with your outlook on life, and it can help you with your state of mind. But these people said prayer is communication with a higher power. If they found that prayer can help you with your mental state and you communicate with a higher power, how much more so for you who knows the name of the higher power? How much more beneficial will prayer be for you? And once again, I encourage you to find a time and a place to pray. I like to get here to church really early and find a place where nobody can find me and I pray and spend time with God. And over the last few years, there have people, there have been people who said, I saw your car in the parking lot. I used my keys to get in. I called you. I couldn't find you. And I was thinking, that's the point. That is absolutely the point. Praise God. I get to spend time with God on a regular basis, and I get to pray to him. I get to listen to him. I get to write things down and have it like a date with God. Another time of the day that I I pray is when I put my kids to sleep. As a father, that is one of my responsibilities, and I have an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, and a two-year-old. And so, you know, we, we do different things. We pray and have like maybe a Devo, and it, we don't do the same thing every day. But I stay in the room, and I pray over them, and it kind of serves two purposes. I spend time with the Lord, but I also make sure that they don't get out of bed because these guys are kind of squirrely, you know, and I do not know where they get it from, probably from their mother, and I just make sure... Just make sure that they go to sleep, but that's when I spend time with God. And I want you to answer the question, where will you pray? When will you pray? Because if you don't have those two questions answered, you're probably not praying how you want to pray. 
I also want to encourage you in your church attendance. Church attendance. Now you're a member. Now what should you do? Well, yes, come to church. But I think that this is an area where we can grow in. And I encourage you to grow in your church attendance. Church is not just a place where you come to serve. I pray that you come here and that you expect God to speak to you. I pray that you would grow your roots here and that you would grow in maturity and in, 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 in your spiritual disciplines and that God would speak to you in a mighty way. Psalms 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. That's such a cool verse. The psalmist said, I am so glad to go to the house of God. It's a place where we get to learn and hear from God. And look at how it says, let us go to the house of God. It's plural form. It's not singular. When we come to church, we're not just coming for ourselves, but we're coming together as the body of Christ. We're coming here to worship the Lord corporately. We're here to uh, listen to him and see what God has plans for us as the body of Christ. This last year, I, like many other people in the world, was busy church hopping, and we would go from church to church in a nanosecond on the Instagram feed, and you could cross state lines and international borders rather quickly. And every time I would hear a church service from you know, somewhere else on the planet, I was really encouraged, and I would always say, this is great content. Why else would I listen to it if it wasn't great content? However, there's nothing like the content of from the church where God has planted me. It seems like this, you know, that whatever series we're going through or the message that, that God has for our home church, it's almost like ordained by God speaking directly to me and to us as a body. And I really feel that we need to come here expecting God to speak to us. Yes, we come here to worship. Yes, we come here to, to listen to God. But let's come expecting God to speak to us. And I really want to encourage you not just to come here to serve, but to sit in a service. My question to you is, which one is your service? What service do you go to? I personally go to the 8 a.m. service. Do I have any 8 a.m. service people in the house? All right. What about 9.30? 11 a.m.? Uh-oh. Getting rowdy. 11 a.m. But 8 a.m. service, this is where I am, unless there is a false fire alarm and I'm running out of here. But this is my service, and I want to encourage you to adopt a service where you come and you expect to hear from God. What is it that you have to do the night before to be here to, to get ready to hear from God? And the next area that I want to encourage you in is humble service. Now, coming to church is one thing to receive, but humble service can be translated to all areas of your life. I think about the discussion that the disciples were having with Jesus and they were kind of getting down on James and John, and they were having this discussion about who shall be the greatest. And Jesus was saying that the rulers of this world, the rulers of the Gentiles, use their authority to lord over others, but it shall not be with you. Whoever wants to become first among you shall be slave, and whoever wants to be the greatest among you must be your servant. Then he said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, for the Son of Man didn't come into the world to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Jesus, he was the ultimate example of a servant. He put, he put others first. And when I think of humble service, I think of, you know, humble meaning you esteem others better than yourself, and service is just, hey, I'm willing to help. And Jesus helped us in exactly what we needed help with. He helped us with our sin problem. However, we cannot serve like Jesus. We cannot get up on a cross and die for the sins of mankind. But think about how you can show humble service to others. And yes, I think it's important that we come here to serve one another as the body of Christ. Yes, we're here to, to serve the people who are coming through these doors. But our humble service pretty much 
It applies every, every time you're with some, some people. It starts in your home. It goes to your community and into your job. The question is, are you serving your family? Are, are you serving your spouse? Are you serving at your place of work? I think of um, one of the things how I like to serve people is I simply like to smile, okay? It's not very a, a spiritual gift, but I try to encourage people with a smile, and I do like these exercises in the morning. I like smile for three minutes, get those muscles going, the, you know, the muscle memory, get the smile going, and I just try to be passionate and energetic with every person I come into contact with. And then when I get home, I like to relax. And so, okay, this is my relaxing face. And, you know, years ago, my wife said, you're not going to come in the house like that. And what she was saying was, well, she, said, she actually threatened me and said, you're going to have lots of problems if you come in the house like that. But translated means, how are you going to go out in the world and be smiling and all energetic, but you come here and you're not smiling? So I want you to come here and I want you to serve me and the kids with a smile. So I have to go home now and be more energetic and more passionate. And, you know, sometimes I'm just tired. But this is simply how I can serve my family. The question is, how can you serve your family? How can you serve the people around you? How do you serve your boss and your colleagues at work? Do you have a ministry here at church? Do you have a, a practical ministry that you can serve others with? Are you using your time, treasure, and talent to serve others? others. I want to encourage you in humble service. Lastly, I want to encourage you to live out the gospel. Live out the gospel. Yes, as people who were impacted by the good news of Jesus Christ, you know we are called to preach the gospel and go throughout all the world and share the good news. We're called to make disciples of all the nations. We're called to teach people everything that we have learned from Jesus. We invite people to church. We invite people uh, to, to prayer. We, we share our testimony. We pray for the needs of others. We're doing all of these things, and I want to encourage you to live out the gospel in all areas of your life, not just by your faith, but all also your deeds. I think of the verse found in James chapter 2, verse 20, that faith without works is dead. My prayer for you is that your works and your deeds would line up with the faith that you are preaching. So when you tell people about the gospel, I pray that every area of your life lines up with what you're preaching. When you talk to someone about the God of forgiveness, I pray that you are a forgiving person. When you talk to people about the loving God, I pray that you are loving, that you are gracious, that you are merciful, that you are compassionate, that your words and your deeds line up with each other. I pray that you have credibility with those around you. I think about uh, the books I used to have of uh, people who wrote um, marvelous things about, about the gospel, about theological uh, points, and I just was so blessed by their, uh, their writings, their sermons, their messages. And then it, com it comes to find out that years later, they have been living a double life. And it w was really disheartening. And basically what I did was I threw the books away. And I deleted the books from Kindle and from Audible. And I no longer want to listen or read that content because it has nothing to do with the content. The content was great, amazing, but the person did not have the credibility. I want you to live out the gospel, that your words and your deeds would line up with each other. I pray that you would have great success as you share the gospel with others. I pray that you would be soul winners and that many people will come to know Jesus Christ through your lives and that your faith and your deeds would line up together. And as I'm sharing these things with you, maybe it sounds a little overwhelming. Maybe there are some of the points that I shared that you know what, you're not living to your fullest pot potential. Maybe you're not growing in one of these areas. 
but I want to encourage you that you are not alone. You were not designed to do this on your own. Thank God that he has given us the Holy Spirit to help us, to enable us, to empower us. He has allowed us to grow in these spiritual disciplines. He will allow you to put others first and uh, live out humble service. He will give you victory so you can live out the gospel and that your words and your deeds would line up with each other. I would like to pray for for all of you, that you would experience the power of the Holy Spirit tonight. Before we receive these members, if you are here in the room and that you want the Holy Spirit to fall upon you and you want power to live out these principles, would you please raise your hand? I want to pray for you just real quickly. Raise your hand. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for calling us to follow you. And this is a life journey to discover and become who you created us to be. And Lord, there is so so much that we can grow and we need to grow in your word. We need to grow in prayer. We need to grow in humble service. And we want to live out the gospel And Lord, I pray for my friends, my brothers and sisters. I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill them right now, that you would touch them, that you would fill them, that you would give them strength as they follow after you. Thank you, God, that you do not leave us, you do not forsake us, but you help us in our time of need. And Lord, I pray that my brothers and sisters would experience you in a new and fresh way every time they go to their prayer spot, every time that they go to study your word, every time they walk through these doors. I pray that they would experience you. I pray for so much fruit in their lives that that fruit would translate to people getting saved, people being encouraged, and the body of Christ being built up. I thank you for it, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.